uh, one of the, the first things that you need to do, and when I first started off, what we did in my shop, because um, I actually had a couple of employees that, that liked competing also, you know, wanted to give it a try. So what we did was we used our, our client's dogs. So when a dog would come in, you know, say it was a poodle or a bichon or something, as we're grooming the dog, all of a sudden we're thinking, contest dog, contest dog, it's got a nice coat, stands well on the table, it's pretty well behaved, it's not overweight, and then you have to ask the client, do you think that, you know, there might come a time that I could actually borrow your dog for a grooming contest? At first I only entered, entered local competitions, so I didn't have to take the dog overnight or anything like that. But when you really get into it, you know, not only are you responsible for this dog, but if you're going to drive a long distance or fly with the dog, you, you know, you've got to find a client that's more than willing to let you do all that. So that's, that's probably your biggest hurdle starting off. And, um, even though I used clients' dogs starting off, um, you know, trying to find the best quality dog, the closest to the breed standard as you possibly can. As judges, especially doing entry level, one of the biggest things we see is that people are finding their favorite dogs. They're, they're using their clients' dogs or their own dogs that are the dogs that they really love doing, but they're overweight, they don't have enough hair, they're not prepped properly. Um, you really need to find a dog that's going to be able to stand, especially if you're doing the poodle class. Those poodles are on the table for close to four hours altogether, sometimes even more than that depending on the size of the class. So don't go in with an overweight dog or, or an elderly dog. That, that dog is just going to be collapsed by the end of the, the whole competition, which is going to stress you out more if you have a dog that's not behaving. So really try to find as close to the breed standard as you possibly can. And when you're getting ready and you're prepping these dogs for competition, you know, you want to have those dogs come in as often as you can get them in. You want to trim them in that same trim as often as you can. Uh, but the prep work leading up to it as far as conditioning the coat, shampooing, keeping that coat from breaking, um, that's so important. And normally what I would do when I was competing is I would take a dog and I'd trim it. You know, the rules say you can trim it six weeks before the competition, but leading up to that six-week point, I would trim that dog just about every week just so I knew my pattern, I knew what I was going to go in and do, and I'd time myself trying to get my time down you know, to where I'm faster, where I have more time for the finish work. And then when it came time that it was right at the six-week point, I would go in and I would trim that dog to perfection. I don't care if I stayed out in my van all night trimming the dog. I would, I would make sure it was just perfect before I left. Mm -hmm. And then I'd let the dog grow out from there. Um, but one thing we see a lot of, especially even in the A division now, is prep work. The dogs aren't prepared properly. They've got tangles in them. The pads aren't clean. The ears aren't clean. The nails aren't grinded. And for me as a judge, if you ever enter under me and sue also as a judge, if your prep work's not good, I'm probably not going to place you in the class. I don't care if you're if your scissor work and your balance is just perfect, the prep work is the base of the total grooming. So you've got to be sure, you know, the ears are wiped clean. I mean, if they've got an ear infection, tell your judge, you know, the dog has an ear infection and I can't clean them like I normally would, but the prep work is just so important. And if that dog's coat isn't prepared and isn't dried right, you know, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be a good finished product. And I used to always bathe my dogs the day of the competition. I don't care if it was, two in the morning, I would get up and bathe them in the day of the competition. That way they're fresh, the coat doesn't curl back down, so, and, yeah, you know. Don't bathe it before you leave home two days before the competition. A lot of people do that, and then they and brush it, it's it out. Just, the, the overall finish is not going to be there. Um, one thing that we do recommend is, um, I know when we first started, what we did in my shop was we actually pooled our tip money, and what we would do is at that six-week point, once we had picked our dogs, we would have somebody come in to the shop, you know, whether if we were doing sporting dogs, we found somebody that was, you know, um, like an expert in sporting breeds or certain breeds or, you know, a poodle person or whatever. And we'd actually pay them to come in for the day and spend an entire day with us. Because what you feel is good prep work really might not be. Um, you know, I've, I've had, we've had people doing seminars for us, you know, when we, when we do our super styling sessions. You know, we try to get dogs lined up so that we don't have to fly or travel with a lot of dogs. So we'll call, you know, local groomers and we'll, we'll have dogs lined up for us. And the prep work, we, we can't even count how many times we've gotten dogs on our table that have mats in the pads of the feet, mats in the armpits, mats in the ears. Nasty so, ears. Yeah, and so now we're, now we're standing up there and we're, you know, 
we're on a, time, a really strict time schedule trying to get all these dogs done in an eight hour period and we're dematting dogs in front of people. So, and we, we make the best of it, but you know, what I'm saying is you're, you might not really understand what good prep work is, so it might be a really good idea if you had somebody come in that is a seasoned competitor or somebody that really knows about, um, you know, the competition ring and what you need to do.